Why is shame such a powerful emotion? How does it affect us mentally, physically, emotionally? I'm Nadia Davis. I'm a mom, author, attorney, and kundalini yoga teacher who has experienced public shaming that brought me to my knees. On this podcast, I'm going to tell you how I'm living the work taking shame out of the shadows. I'll give you real life advice and skills to take away with you throughout your day. You'll hear from powerful guests who have overcome trauma and emerged stronger than ever. You too can ban the shame within and around you. Join me. You are not alone. Hi, everyone, and welcome home. Today, we're going to get into the muck of it all, and we're going to talk about how shame is showing up today, how it shows up today in all our lives so that we can dig ourselves out and live a more joyous present life. I am going to explain here quickly why shame. Well, first of all, please let my story serve as a roadmap so that you know we're we're not going to have shame about having shame. First, we're going to see how it shows up, but we're not going to have shame for having shame. And most of all, that others have shamed us for our responses to pain in life. That is what took me years to climb out of. And today, today I'm blown away that I have the ears and the responses from a doctor, a shame expert. Like it's just blown my mind that writing a book about the healing process has led to the, this podcast today where Dr. Stephen Polter, who wrote many books, including The Shame Factor, is literally right here and I get to pick his brain. Yes, for me, but also for all of you, the listeners. And so I'm thinking, you know, as I'm preparing for this talk, like, what would, you know, the other clients of my therapist, the other students in Kundalini Yoga class, the other people in my fellowship rooms want to ask a doctor about how psychology is spirituality and just about how to get through the day, feeling a little more calm feeling a little bit more in control of life. And so I'm like, okay, well, honestly, I really just want to say like, how does my mind work? Okay. You're, you're the one who knows the brain. And so can I just go in and can't you give me my to-do list about affecting this chemical release or whatever it might be? No, he's going to explain how it shows up through what through how it shows up and through what it shows up through in present life. That's where we're going to start. I really encourage everybody to push the fear and judgment out of the way. All about like our step four work, our inventories and step work, all the fears about working with a sponsor, about going into therapy and all of that. Yeah, that's all scary. But it's not admitting like powerlessness. It's not admitting our quote unquote wrongs. It is gaining power because when we admit we're powerless over our minds and egos, it is total freedom. I mean, I can't even emphasize that enough. And it's our shame within that scares us away from diving in and doing the work. You do not have to live in a struggling grin and bear it mode. You don't. There is so much freedom when we recognize how shame shows up through so many different things. You don't have to be stuck in our ego, mind, and patterns. You can access something real within our hearts. I call it a home within. That's what I call it. And we're going to dive right in here. Please listen to the first couple of episodes 
released in the first week of October of the discussions with Dr. Stephen Polter because he gives his story. He explains how shame showed up in his life, why he came to the study of shame. And today we're going to continue that discussion, but also really, really dive into the good stuff that you can take with you to help you throughout your day. So doctor, if I stayed, you know, self-centered, I'd said, how does my, I would ask you, how does my brain work? But I'm going to ask you first, do you have anything else you want to add to our first discussion about your story, the evolution of the book and anything in the first episode? Yes. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Not it. Yes. What I would add is feeling inadequate or self-doubt or feeling vulnerable at times is really good because if you're not, you're not in your body. And if you're not in your body, where are you? Mm -hmm. I deal with a lot of men who don't get in their body until they get cancer or have a heart attack. So today, There'll be a thousand men that will die in this country from cardiac arrest. Of that thousand, 900 of them had no prior health issues. That was my father. Correct. As is my clients over the years. Of the 900 that die, they say, this is the American um, Heart Association. Of that 900, there was maybe unresolved mental health issues that spilled into their body. Shame is one of those mental health issues. And I love that men are talking about mental health. If you, if we're, shame is an ambiguous emotion. It's like jello. You can feel it, but you can't really hold it hard. You can't squeeze it because mm. it'll evaporate. And shame, and we're going to talk about six areas it shows up in for men and women. It has nothing to do with gender because, um, Shame is a very universal experience across the board. But of those 900 men that die today, I always think how many of them had this sense of inadequacy that really ended up breaking their heart, literally and figuratively. Mm. And of the men that survive, very few of them really had pre-existing heart or physical health conditions. I heard this, I heard this statistic on ESPN this summer, Mm -hmm. this last summer. And I was speechless, you know, that that is how shame shows up. It's like cancer. If you don't do an intervention, it just keeps growing. And the six Mm -hmm. areas we're going to get into today, and we talked about how last time, how it started in my life, but what I've found professionally, and I I estimate I've probably seen people over 60,000 hours in the last 30 years. With wow. clients, I, I've done, I was deposed and the lawyer asked me, how, how many hours do you think you've really done face to face? Well, probably average, you know, you start doing the numbers and we're at 60,000. And what I've seen clinically, there's six areas it is insidious in. It's like it's laying in the weeds. If we go in the swamp of life, you know where the alligators are typically, you know where the snakes are, but no one ever deals with the water that's cloudy. And that's shame. Shame takes where you're clear. And a lot of people don't think they have it. Oh, my God. I mean, there's guilt. There's guilt. Nadia, I want to say in my practice, men and women, all ages, let's say above eight, let's say above 18, college age and above. Sometimes they look at me like I have have three heads. I'm like, what are you talking about? (laughs) You know, what are you you talking about? Because it. Shame is part of the human condition. In different spiritual orientations, they call it sin, call it maya, delusion, confusion, but it's there. And if we address it, clarity. And so you you do a lot of kudalini, spiritual things, and that breeds clarity. And you don't get clarity. That's not random. You have to clear the logs Mm -hmm. off your road. And Mm -hmm. shame is a fork in the road. It's more than a log. It's a fork. You know, the old saying, are you going north or you're going south? It's probably better you go north because that leads toward enlightenment and clarity. And these six areas tend to cloud our vision. 
And I'm, I'm, just, I'm so, gonna go. You go ahead. I'm gonna stop you for a second. Please. That shadow. That shadow versus vulnerability. Yes. Describe that process a little more. That, please. Yes. I I say to my clients often. There's I refer to Eastern psychology, which is a spiritual approach, which is absolutely rock solid. And Carl Jung, uh, he knew um, Dr. Freud. Literally was friends mm -hmm. with him. And really, yeah, they were best. They were close colleagues, best friends at a certain point. And then he. The shadow, which he called shame also, is that part of us that we disown. And in the Bible, I remember hearing this in seminary, the thief in the night breaks into your home. Who's the thief? Mm -hmm. That part of you you don't own. That part mm -hmm. of you you reject. It's going to break into your life. He or she's going to show up. People, that but, in the it, present day. Yes. It, those that are listening. Yes. Like how the shadow shows up so immediately when we wake up. Yes. The shadow, the best how way to deal with it. How has that felt for you? Yes. The shadow. It's human existence. It's We all, you don't want to get rid of your shadow. You want to understand him or her. Mm. And you want to bring them into your life. As you bring them in, they don't have to sabotage your life to get your attention or give you a cardiac arrest or, you know, or breast cancer or heart um, attack or a stroke. Mm -hmm. Let them come in. Understand them because the shadow part of us has a lot of information about our psychology, our relationships, our spiritual journey. We're all on a spiritual path. I always tell people that and they look at me and I, people that go, I don't believe in God. Well, you believe in self growth, right? Yeah. Well then you're, you're on your way. <laughs> so you're, you're on your talking right. about the shadow self and like the ego mind mm -hmm. like okay. I, I stay away from so those words because i stay away from those okay. words because it's too heady okay people on wall street want to know well i made x number of dollars but i still don't something's missing because okay. your your self-worth will never be your net worth and that's one of the biggest mistakes for men they equate their net worth with their value. And that is shame. Because that comes from a sense of not feeling good enough. If because what's enough? One man's wealth is another man's poverty, as the saying goes. And ego, shame's all in the ego. When I say shame, I'm saying ego. You know, they're okay. same going different sides. And healing your shame is getting to your better self, your best self. And, and that's where you, the vulnerability. Correct. And that keeps 70% of all divorces are based on a lack of vulnerability. Okay. Now, 30% of crazy stuff. Okay. That's, but I'm talking 70% of marriages and end, they have one common factor. There's many factors, but the most common is a lack of vulnerability on the one partner's part. Typically, the so guy who won't, amazing. they won't join. Empathy, I, in the new book I've done, New Masculinity, empathy is my ability to know how I feel. So Nadia, I can connect with you. Not that I don't have empathy, not that I don't have compassion for you. Empathy is my ability to know what my psychological stuff is. So I can connect with you psychologically. That's empathy. It's not compassion. Compassion is a hundred miles. Compassion is great, but empathy is life changing. Like your book. That is home. so healingly powerful because <laughs> It enables us knowing that to identify when it's, when there's, yes. when there is lack of compassion, Right. It, it simply has nothing to do with us. It has to do with another's inability to connect, to know their feelings, to connect. Right. Cause I have women come in literally marriages, primary issue. He doesn't, we don't connect emotionally. We don't mm -hmm. connect. And this has nothing to do with, there's no infidelity. There's no, it's a good relationship externally, but internally it's, it's like a freezer. There's no connect. There's no warmth, you know, it, and that's where I tell men, that's your shame blocking you from really connecting to your best self. 
And it right. usually listen. And all the drama comes in because we take it personally. There you um, go, Nadia. Or it's projected. Mm -hmm. And projected means I'm not taking responsibility for my feelings or my role in the situation. Wow. Projection is I'm not taking responsibility. Now, I can take responsibility and understand why I'm projecting on you. That's it. That's a night and day difference. Okay. So not th this we're so this is covering what can happen layers and layers and so much time wasted when yes. we don't know that there is a shadow self and whatever we want to call it. Yes. Versus versus the ability to be vulnerable. And to you connect know, with our feelings. Absolutely. It, it, our therapist, and like my mentor, there's your public self and then there's your private self. Most people are very good at having a public self. All right. Your private self is where your shadow is. You've got to, you've got to bring them in and bring her in. You can't leave them I outside. Think the, the more court. perfectionists we see with public self uh, yep. may likely be so unaware of their own feelings and Correct. connection within because when we are we we present yes. authentic vulnerability and authentic there is no ego in it there's no ego ego doesn't even because your authentic is your core self connecting and that's our soul our best self and shame is absolutely wash down the river. It's not relevant. It's not a player. And ban. You can ban shame, folks, yeah. if you're not presenting perfectly in every single moment of the day today by mm -hmm. telling yourself, I am so damn connected to my feelings and my psyche today. I'm going to just be me. If someone says, oh, whatever, mm -hmm. there's a spot on your shirt or whatever, yeah, you know, you didn't share perfectly today. Well, you know what? Screw that. Because within you, <clears throat> you know, you know, you felt it all, you feel it all, whatever, whatever delayed you this morning or whatever. That's just mm -hmm. to my two cents. No, I love it. No, not but, a okay. Okay. This people... Shame is becoming more, the term is becoming more mainstream. And I think it's wonderful because shame is another, it's a piece of us, Carl Jung said, your disowned self. Mental health is I embrace him mm -hmm. or her. Mental health is I am able, I can stay in the moment when I'm embracing the parts of myself I'm not comfortable with. You know? That's the it, psychology is spirituality. Absolutely. That that's what you just explained. Okay. Yes, hands down. Okay. Wayne Dyer and the different uh, kind of spiritual uh, mentors in the last period of time. Psychology is a pathway to spirituality. It's just okay. you know it's camouflaged. I always smile. Okay. I always smile because you're on a spiritual path. I these twenty somethings looking at me like, what do you mean? Well, don't you want to feel better? <laughs> Yeah. Don't you think you want to make a difference in the world? Yeah. How is that not a spiritual approach? Because spirituality right. has no limits or, de I mean, po unlimited potential in a great way. And shame says you're limited. Shame is a terrorist. Shame yeah. And then the mind creates shame about not being on a spiritual path when in fact <laughs> someone is. We are. We all are. That's what I'm saying. And you're breathing today too. Okay. These are givens. You can't, ignore, you can ignore it. That doesn't mean it's not there. I always use the analogy about microwaves. Oh, people didn't believe it until, well, there's microwaves. <laughs> because we didn't believe it doesn't mean it's not existing. It's so cool you say that because in the other episodes where I'm talking to my oldest son and then a, a spiritual Beautiful. quote unquote guru, mm -hmm. they bring up, Diego brought up, having not listened to each other's talks, mm -hmm. how that innate curiosity Yes. To dive into that is this is the first starting point. But that innate curiosity is how we all are on Correct. the spiritual it's, path, like you're saying. It's all there. And then we, we all long for authenticity. 
like Priya explained, a quest for authenticity. It's like we're all on this path. On that path. Okay, Nadia. Okay, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a guy here with you for a minute. I am amazed when I watch these different sports programs on the depth and breadth of research into how this football game is going to go. And I'm always <laughs> thinking, oh my God, this is their way of trying to reach God. It sounds, aw- I swear to God, I listen to these great, I'm like, oh my, if you, you take that tool set and apply it to this, you're changing the world. World hunger has gone in a day. I mean, I listen to these guys on different ESPN talk shows. I'm like, oh my God, you are so freaking brilliant. Let's flip that over <laughs> here and watch the world change in a day. Because it's Love their it. way of trying to find it through sports. Mm-hmm. And I tell women, and I, a lot of women love sports, No, but I'm talking like the look of their part and they're like, what's the big deal? No, it's like Diego said, it's that innate desire to find something, you know? To find meaning. That's your the team. Soul. That's the right. Meaning. That's your soul. There you okay. go. There's that. Listen, my shadow side, he, he, until I really acknowledged him, <laughs> he would show up at the, at the most inopportune times. That's my, awesome. <laughs> most inopportune times. I'm like, uh, that part of me I don't yeah, like. Yeah, and then men get criticized because they're like, mm-hmm. you no, know, he's not emotionally acce- accessible or there's no. He's you know, out. empathy. Yeah. In my case, there's no apology, and it's like mm-hmm. it's like no, it has nothing to do with me. Oh, zero. That they're zero, zero. Managing I tell women. in their own way, and mm-hmm. um, and there is a quest for truth yeah. and spirituality in Not that yet. way you're describing it. it so with a lot of, yeah, go ahead. I deal with a lot of guys in finance, making mm-hmm. incredible amounts of money. Sometimes I'm thinking. I could feel bad that I don't make eight figures. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Insight is priceless. You can't buy insight. Mm-hmm. You may buy luxuries, but you'll never buy insight. Insight comes from within. And that's why they, it's in every spiritual, the pearls of great price are found within. I have men come in and talk about their trust, the living trust, and the money they're leaving their family. And they go, I really hope it makes them happy. I go, well, it won't. <laughs> It'll make them comfortable. But happiness starts within. Beautiful. It's all within. And what you're talking about, Nadia, going home, which I love your book, because it's in here. We're not talking about going to Hawaii. Nothing wrong with Hawaii. But if you go to Hawaii, <laughs> make sure you bring your home with you. Yeah. That's a metaphor. You know, it, my heart is in my home is Christ's heart. I remember reading that like in college and it, it talked about how your spiritual self sit in the living room and you run in the house and never look in the living room. And they got all your closets are busting with old things that you won't Absolutely. get rid of, let go of. But you go to the kitchen and eat. OK, that's good. But the rest of the house you ignore. Until eventually you can't live in it. And that's when and that's when weird things start happening. That's where all these different issues come up: anorexia, mm-hmm. bulimia, drug use. I just can't live in my own house. I'm like, and your book says you've got to come home. Yes, you've got to come home. And John Bradshaw broke the broke the ice with that book, you know, Homeward Bound. When you come in the house, okay, shame, you're out, you're out of the house. And all of a sudden, all these minions go with it. <laughs> but you have to acknowledge <laughs> it. All these little minions go with it. And you're like, well, they're, weren't they part of the furniture? No. No. Open the drapes. Open the windows. Turn the lights on. And then you realize your best self has been waiting for you to come and sit down with him or her. Right there on the couch. In the living room. Bam. Gives me chill. Let's get into the tips and how those minions come up. <laughs> let's, let's get direct yeah. and real. So anyone listening can walk away with, Oh, yes. Oh, pop, those pop, are pop, my pop, minions. Pop, pop, minion. Yes. Let's do it. Hey, let's go. Let's go. To, um, there's six areas. How do the minions show up, doctor? <laughs> minions show up in the morning 
when you wake up and the first thought you have is, oh, I got oh my God, I got to go deal with this. It, the minions are self-doubt. We call it anxiety, but this uneasiness we feel within, uh, this the issues we don't want to look at, the relationship issues, or the fact we do retail therapy and we're upside down in it. You know, uh, or a deal didn't go through and we feel like we're losers, feel very defeated. Addictions. <laughs> right on. Oh, the whole Do you know, I was going to call Canada, those, right. I, no, I call addictions, older minions. <laughs> There's the little ones that start okay. and they lead to the older ones, which are game changers. Not, and again, addiction is shame's best friend. I have people. Say, well, I'm not. I have no addictions. But meanwhile, they're gambling, or they're so attached to sports. I have nothing. Okay, I mean, I love sport, but they're so attached. That's their addiction. Yeah, and addiction has such a bad, doesn't it? It's yeah, such a rep. Word, it's like a I mean, you know, so yeah. many men have like whatever and, sex and, addictions, and, masturbation, and it's like, it's like. <sighs> The shaming and whatever it might be. I'm Correct. just saying drugs, alcohol, or cleaning, or organizing, or you know whatever we do. Right. Men, women do the same thing. But Hoarding. all of the shaming of that then mm -hmm. adds another layer. And, and Nadia, what it does, it keeps you away from yourself. And psychology is to cut through that and help the person find their best self. And that's gestalt Let's therapy. Let's cut through it got through it and create a different dialogue. I hear all these different modalities. All roads lead to Rome. Rome is you, your core self. And I ask guys in their 30s, tell me about your core self. And they look petrified by that question. Or I have women come in in their mid 30s. Tell me about your core self. I want to have children. I had a woman this week. I want to have, I want to have babies. Okay. I, awesome. So what are we doing about it? Not dating. Doesn't really like men. Because her core self doesn't think she's good enough to have a partner. That's shame. And that's where shame comes in. And the addiction is self-loathing. You know, I read this the other day by the holist, the, I mean, the holist of psychologists. She posted this. Perfectionism is a result of approval seeking. Because I always tell people a perfection is self-loathing, which is, and that leads to shame. I'm not good enough. I'm Perfectionism. Only, wow. Leads to self-loathing, which is shame. That's shame is very covered up. It's very well disguised. And it hides. In, so one mm -hmm. thing we can notice is when we are addicted to perfectionism. Yes. Okay. That is a red flag. I go after that with um, men and women, my practice. You know, sometimes I'll, we'll get there, but when they talk. I'm getting chills because now that I'm aware of mine, it's so apparently observable in others. And, and, and you, you know, my heart like hurts knowing someone is stuck in that. Knowing place. so many and, and that's where having that safe place to share, cry and be vulnerable with others is so important. Getting back to vulnerability, you said. So powerful. Let alone within ourselves. But, but anyway, so perfectionism, you are saying is a red flag. Huge red flag. And people say, I don't have any shame. Nadia? I hear that more times than I hear I'm dealing with shame. I hear that when I say more times, I'm talking 90%. Had a young man come in yesterday, met his dad after X number of years. I go, you have a lot of shame about feeling it, being abandoned. What are you talking about? And he goes on and on about being perfect. And I go, well, that is the shame. Because if you're not perfect, you're not lovable. Shame says you're, you're damaged goods. And he's like, ugh. 
doesn't it? This is why I learned. And we weren't born with. No. We we were born able to cry, poop, do whatever Mm -hmm. you want when you're a baby. Just be who Mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. And be who you are without, you know, any judgment and whatever. And then the coming of the ego, Priya explained, is like this, this separation. And, and that's. From your best self. And, you know, in Nadia, we all come here to learn stuff in this, in this school of life. I do. And part of my journey is understanding shame because I found it so debilitating. And you were seeing it in that young man. Oh my God. While he was explaining all the efforts, but I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm a good guy. He's a great guy. He goes, you know, I, you know, I went to this Ivy league. I did this stuff. My dad didn't give me a cent, but the rage that was coming out of him. I go, you got a lot of rage. He goes, what are you talking about? I go, the way you talk, it's scary. Your energy is scary. He's looking at me. He goes, what? I go, that's the wounded boy in you. He's screaming to feel loved and cared for. And I, I go, maybe we got to talk about this again next week. He's like, yeah, done. <laughs> goes, and angry yeah. that that, that mm-hmm. um, your outside identity isn't enough to fill the hole. That, that don't people see? Uh, Nadia? That's the rage. You know, there's a book called Pilgrim, Pilgrim's Progress. It's written by John something in 1700 he was put in prison for his christian faith and pilgrim's progress is our spiritual journey through life and it was written 400 years ago or 350 years ago wow nothing's changed and the vanity fair is the illusion of all this stuff outside nothing wrong i mean we're not saying it's evil but remember priority starts within not without people go outside and then go in and realize it, they're bankrupt Right. Emotionally bankrupt. And I t- I've said, I think I said this last time we spoke, there's an old saying, he's so poor, all he has is money. He's so poor, all he has is money. And you don't want, I tell guys, you don't want to be that guy. Because your wife, your kids, they don't like you. Because you don't like yourself. And liking yourself is not narcissism. Because narcissism when it gets to a certain point, devaluates others to inflate yourself. Empathy embraces yourself and others. You want to be high on the empathic scale. Say that again. Empathy and narcissism devaluates to compensate for feeling defective. Deflates others. Right. Devaluates them. Uh, name calling. I mean, I have couples that come in. Shaming. Yeah. And I hear the the partner speak to the other partner. And I'm like, stop, 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 stop. No, no. Do you see what you just did to her or did to him? Well, this is their behavior. I go, no, no, you're paralyzing them. It's like kryptonite. Yes. You're oh, paralyzing them with kryptonite. And that's shame. And they look at me naughty. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Okay. It took, Criticism. It a long time. Long time to, to bring clear ourselves out of that. I'm telling you, Nadia, I, I think part of the reason why I have gray hair, um, <laughs> it takes a long, it's, it's, I find it very hard. Someone said the other day, he has loser children. She's dating this guy. I go, they're not losers. No one's a loser. That was her shame talking. Yes. That's awful. And, and she looked at me and she goes, oh my God, you're right. I go, they're depressed. They feel neglected. How would you be? How would I be? It's like, oh my God, I never thought of that. No one's a loser. I mean, I, I'm not trying to be rainbows and you. And the you know, irony is, yeah. if there's a perfectionist presenting, mm-hmm. it, it's presenting all that is not what they want recognized. They don't want you to see the insides. All of these tie in so closely together. Oh my God, it's all related. You know, like it, and Carl Jung, the shadow side. And Kud- part of Kudalini and Kriya Yoga is getting to your higher self, your best self, mm-hmm. as is psychology. But I tell people, don't be a white light chaser. Like you transcend and you just want to get to the core self and be there. But you've got That's to. That's what I did for a while. But right, you, you got to clear do the, the You got to do the work. 
Right. And the show Ted Lasso, I'm not, you, you, you've heard, it was on Blockbuster's show. In the last episode, the second last episode, his mother comes to visit him. Ted's like in his 40s. Mm-hmm. And he says to his mom, he says, F you that you never worked on yourself. After dad committed suicide when I was 16, why didn't we go to therapy? I love her line. She goes, because I thought if we didn't talk about it, it would go away. Mm. I get chills talking. I saw that, Nadia, and I went, that is so, that's our ego. That's shame at its best. If we don't talk about it, it'll go away. It's not going away. It'll go underground. It's not going away. Yes. You can bear it. It's not going away. And, and it Ted, just breeds pain right. and so, anger. So Ted says to him, but I love that you love me and you did this great stuff and you wrote me notes and whatnot. But mom, you didn't do the work. Right. And I, mom, I've had to do the work. Profound, universal. Wow. I have so many people, don't talk about it, it'll go away. It, some things we don't need to talk about, okay? Like, you know. An embarrassing situation for somebody, but then there's stuff you got to talk about with yourself. When there's and been a suicide around with all of that, that is exhausting, and that's why. Um, I think it was, I'm going to find the author's name. And I'll bring it back to you. But Vanity Fair, in quotes, is living externally, not internally. That's why I love that magazine. I love the name Vanity Fair because it really captures it perfect. It's all about mm-hmm. what, what it looks like, not what it is. It's what it looks like. And, you know, you go, like your book, I love the title because you can't go outside unless you've been at home. Because you're not at home, you're still looking for it. You're it. looking for it. Where's my home? It's right here. It's right here. And that it's doesn't beautiful. mean you, you can't socialize. I'm not any of that. And that's why meditation or prayer, solitude, get helps you connect to your home and the living room where your best self's right there looking at you and you have a conversation together. Otherwise, it becomes, you know, a very uncomfortable place to be in your own home. And eventually you have you don't... to build a home within us. Right. And eventually, if you don't, not as you well know, I know, you don't go home. Now, right. and people hate the homeless. Homeless are symbolic. Represent us when we disown our home, disown our lives. Mm-hmm. Very symbolic. Okay. There's a lot of homeless people driving around in a Bentley. How, let's get into. How to get there. Some core ways. I loved, I loved everything you shared. And <laughs> and it's such, that is the starting place. Oh, Shane. What we you just know, so discussed. Now we just, I agree that with you. That is the general feeling and starting places, the general I, patterns. Yep. The, okay. So we kind of talked about the landscape, but yeah, the, I want to run six areas by you that okay. shame hides in. Money and finances. Okay. Romantic relationships, marriage, number two. Three, our childhood family. A lot of people are living in the past. Or number four, our present day family with our own children or partners or siblings. Number five is a big one. Your health and your body image. And number six. And number six. I'm sorry. I'll let you finish. And number six is loss and death. Those six, Nadia, there's no one listening to this. It's not dealing with one of those six, myself included. Nobody is not addressing one of those six. And if they say they're not, mm-hmm. I'm going to check their pulse. Because <laughs> <laughs> not being honest. Okay, money, finances, romantic mm-hmm. relationships, then family, children. Childhood, fa- family of origin, our parents. Oh, okay, family of origin. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then present day, our present day family. Family of divorced, origin sing. and then our present yeah. day. Okay. And then number five is a big one. Our health 
slash body image. Okay. And number six, loss and death. Loss can be okay. enormous. Oh, yes. Okay. When you say these six, these are six factors or ways through which the shame will show up through in life through which that, that, Absolutely. that shadow self is, that's what our shadow self is maneuvering. That is okay. He doesn't want to be exposed. The dude doesn't want to come out or the, the woman doesn't want, they want to stay because they, they don't want to be exposed. When you're exposed, you have to be healed. Exposure therapy, Nadia, fundamentally, is you deal with what's in the closet. Someone who has a fear of driving also had a fear of being abused as a child or a fear of not being good enough. It shows up in driving. Or the fear of flying shows up. The fear of flying shows up mm -hmm. as a result of a chaotic home life growing up. Instability, unpredictability. So a fear day. of diving in. Correct. Is because well, I don't have if I don't have control, I'm gonna die. No, 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 no. You're gonna die if you have control. You gotta release control. Okay. It's the paradox. Okay. Because they they feel they won't have control over what they see in and the right, closet. And, they, and then you start white knuckling their life. And their life becomes very, very small. Very, very small. Okay. And health, you know, you know um, psychosomatic, metaphysics, that stuff is scary accurate. You know, people say, oh, it's, you know, it's kind of fringe. Not, it is not fringe. It's because the metaphysics people, researchers, mentors know that if you don't deal with your spiritual life and your emotional life, it's going to show up in your body. This could mm -hmm. spill into your body. You know, and people say, you know, they're struggling with high blood pressure. Okay, let's learn how to relax physically. But to, to relax physically, I have to deal with their terror of not being in control. Because if I'm not in control, bad things happen when we're a child. I always like work backwards. A lot of people want to start backwards and go forward. No, no. What's paralyzing you today is where we need to unhook you from. Some from the past. Okay, let's give an example. Of, mm -hmm. So you're saying that that thing from the past, yes. regardless of these six factors, it'll show up Somewhere. in everyday life, practical ways, kind of Absolutely. through one of these. Okay. Exactly. Let's talk about where people have a, kind of like a, Life, there's like an uneasiness they feel frequently. And they'll want to exercise two or three hours a day, which is great to exercise. And it goes away momentarily, but it, you're not, you're cutting the weeds, you're not pulling them out by the roots. Mm. There's a reason why there's that uneasiness there. Mm -hmm. I, had okay. a, I had a client yesterday say to me, Sorry. I want to say they, they said to me, I need to have projects so I don't have, so I'm not thinking. <laughs> I go, I love you. I said, I go, you're so freaking honest. What happens if you think I'll get lost? I know you won't. You'll probably heal yourself. It'd be scary, but you can do it. That is do. so an addiction of mine. Right. My to-do list. I mean, it's like, Business. yeah, you too. Mm -hmm. oh, still, I'm working on it. <laughs> it's okay. Not yes, we are works in progress. We are, you know, something it, we're all works in progress. Someone asked Gandhi, you freed India from Britain. Okay. Your, your work's done. No, that's only part of it. Mm -mm. Cause we come this No, life. it's living the work. So it, that's it what living. we're going to hear. Totally. Yep. It's living the work. So, I mean, I'm trying today to remember to eat. <sighs> I, I had some health issues like a year ago. I mean, a lot of stress and pain. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. anyways, so the to That's a really good point. The Not control, it. the self-care totally gets thrown out when, but there's compassion. It's like, okay, I did mm -hmm. my best. 
and you know, understanding I'm table why. and sober today. If this is how it's manifesting, yep. okay, do a little journal with your sponsor. You are going to remember to have three full meals. And it's been that way a couple of months and it's been so much better. Congratulations. Because there's our body. It shows up in our body. Mm-hmm. Now, I have other men who want eat their way through Europe, metaphorically. Right. They're trying to eat their feelings. <laughs> Where people want to stay away from their feelings and they don't eat. It ends up in the same place. You're avoiding right. yourself. Either way. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Can you give a client example of each of these six? And then Absolutely. in the next okay. episode, we're going to really we're going to dive in more. Is that where you wanted to go? Absolutely. Because for let's do, okay. let's go with money and finances. I now I'm going to go to love relationships because we all, you know, okay. I always say there's three types of people: um, want to be in a relationship, in a relationship, or want to get out of a relationship. <laughs> you know, so I mean, there's, I'm not trying to be cynical, but there's like three. <laughs> you know, it's one of those three typically. And what mm-hmm. re- relationships, intimate relationships, replace our childhood family. That's why they're so powerful. Mm-hmm. And someone will say, oh, well, I don't act anywhere else like this in my life. I go, exactly. You're not supposed to. Mm-hmm. Like your childhood family, you didn't go to someone else's house and act like that. It's your, mm-hmm. it replaces, it becomes your modern day incubator, crucible, intimate relationships, mm-hmm. emotionally intimate. And that many times will show uh, stuff we don't feel good about ourselves, or we felt criticized or ignored. Very interesting. Or we, yeah. So, or or we'll find ways that the current partner fits in yeah. with that, but it's really a core wound that's unrelated. So, I say in, in the new book, the masculinity book, I tell guys they go, "She does this stuff, do, all this stuff she does wrong." I go, "Dude, not true." That was there 30 years ago before her, she, you met her. Those issues predate her by 30 years. Oh, my gosh. And they look at me like I'm betraying them. Like I just, you know, betrayed the brotherhood. No. If you're in a rage with your partner, that's an old issue. That's an old issue. I know. And there's more research to substantiate that than you and I have molecules in this room and that's and men that become abusive they're not it goes back to it, that that thread goes right back to childhood about age five now anger management's awesome not letting it shame management is pulling out by the roots i've never met a man who deals with this shame who's violent you make it angry but he's not violent Emotionally, um, psychologically, spiritually, wow. um, physically. Say but that I again. I, 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 I find he, it. You've never met a man, man who has dealt with his shame that is violent, emotionally violent. Emotionally violent, physically violent, scary. He may be edgy. That's that's personality. That's okay. You know, it's like it's like the clothes they wear, metaphorically. But violence comes from childhood. Emotional, physical, and physical. Started psychological. there. Psychological. Yep, started there. And shame is in that like a forest fire. It's like a firestorm. It feels. So if fire. you see that showing up in the present day relationships, time out. I always okay. tell guys, take a time out. Step back. I had one couple, I told the husband, you need to leave for a week. Why? You need to cool off. Because when you cool off, you'll get clarity. And he felt that his wife was criticizing him. And she was, but not to the degree in which he was experiencing. It was disproportional. I tell him, your response mm-hmm. is dispro- disproportional to the event. Example, road rage. Okay, I get cut off. I'm going to jump out of the car with a, a 45 automatic handgun. That goes back to feeling powerless as a child. Or being molested and feeling powerless and never having a voice. So it manifests present day. Okay. Very powerful. Okay. That's a very good example of how shame shows up 
present day. In relationships, in present day. And so when someone says to you, Nadia, oh, I have no shame. I go, okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about which relationship to money or it, you'll see it. It's someplace. It's hiding. It's hiding. Got it. But it's active. Shame's not inactive. It's not dormant. It's active. And, and that's part of what I've learned right in this book is it's active. And that's why this was supposed to be a workbook initially. I probably will do a workbook, but I want to give people an overview of where it hides. Because once you see it, you can't hide. And then the healing comes through self-acceptance, understanding. We'll talk about that emotional boundaries, emotional insight. Those stuff we'll get to later, Nadia. What's the antidote to shame? Liking yourself. Love. Yeah, love. A lot of people have a hard time with that word. So I start off with like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's how we're going to start. Start with liking ourselves. Yeah, because if you can like okay. yourself, you can get there. Okay, one more example. A guy will come and go, the guy disrespected me. I go, when you were growing up, did you feel ignored? And they'll kind of look at you. When you were younger, did you have older brothers, older sisters? You find that dis him feeling disrespected goes way back. Before age 10. Prior to age 10. All the developmental psychologists say that's where that stuff hides. And realizing that, then I'm not triggered in the present day. Okay, someone ignored me. Right. Okay. Maybe they don't understand. They've got their issues. Maybe I trigger them about an abusive or uncle or father. And, and now it's it, so freeing. See, now this that's exactly about feeling. bashing or, or like, why are we so, you know, averse to the step work, the inventories, the seeing a therapist and diving in? It's because of shame. But Absolutely. when we see that it can be transformed into freedom and power that allows us to be more present in this moment, it is so so worth it. And I am excited yes. to do it every day. We, you can build excitement to wake up, say, hmm, what's going to show up today? It's exciting. And life completely changes. Yes. And then a lot of these fears about not, deprivation, emotional deprivation is shame's um, first cousin. Because emotional deprivation says there's not enough. Mm. Not enough money not enough sex, not enough drugs, not enough fun. Emotional deprivation. Emotional deprivation. deprivation is is you don't, you're not connected. You're not at home. You're not at home. As your book lays out, if you're not at home, where are you? You feel deprived because you are. But having X number of dollars will not bring you home. You've got to do the work. You got to walk home. You can't buy your way there. You got to walk there. Wow, I think emotional deprivation is epidemic. Um, it it's its own. If I'm going to do another book, I would write about men and emotional deprivation. It explains why these guys on Wall Street will steal billions from, from retirement fund because they never got enough as a kid. I'm telling. I know people. Oh, that's too simple. Well, really. Ask them when they're sitting in prison for 10 years how this all started. And many times. When, well, when we are choosing to build a life that continues depriving of ourselves emotionally as adults. Externally. You're not at home. If you're at home, right. deprivation is getting addressed. Avoid Because there is enough. There's always well, enough. You're there's always enough. That's what I've learned. There's always enough. That's life changing. There is always enough. Enough. If two people see yeah, that vulnerability as courageous. Yes. There's always enough. And okay, we're gonna sorry. we're gonna stop here. I'm gonna let you finish. <laughs> okay. There's so much we're going to continue to cover. Yeah. Nadia. So much, folks. 
please I, I, continue to check in. I encourage your listeners, wherever you may be, whatever you're doing, think about in your life where you feel underappreciated, not seen, discriminated against, dismissed, discounted. Go there and keep walking because you're going to find a lot of information that's going to set you free. Perfect. Anyone that's listening, after you do that, you can send us direct Please. questions, comments, and we'll get um, on them. anything. Absolutely. What the work you've done mm-hmm. through the open mic tab on the Mind Body Spirit FM app that is free that hosts this podcast. You can leave voice messages. We challenge you. We encourage you. You are not alone. And start with that. And please communicate to me about about this work. You can also email me and contact me through the website. Absolutely. Um, Nadia, there's always enough. Yes. Do you know me? An abundance. An abundance within. One of the most painful areas of law, as you know, is trust, family trust. When people argue over blood money and and the ugly comes out, not that family courts, rainbows and unicorns, stuff I've heard about trust where siblings sue each other for millions of dollars, that goes back to childhood. That's a childhood issue. That's not a money issue. Or someone got mom's ring when it was promised to the other daughter and they sue each other for it. That is painful. Not that family law court doesn't have terrible issues. I mean, they're trying to do their best, but deprivation. You deal with your deprivation, you're not missing much because shame thrives with you feeling like you don't have enough. Bam. Bam. Dive into emotional deprivation. deprivation. Dive into this Mm -hmm. and reach out and tell us about your work. I encourage everybody to check out the websites, but most of all, just take a little bit of time to begin this journaling. Okay? We are sending a load of warm hugs to everybody. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Polter. I'm blown away by this partnership. Your last words. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And hasta luego. Okay. <laughs> I love it. See thank you, you next Nadia. Time. For, okay. Thank you, Nadia. Of a flame that never dies. You are not alone. If you are dealing with shame and trauma, please reach out to me through my website, nadia davis.com. You can get a free band shame tip sheet and find out about upcoming events. I'd love it if you picked up my book, Home is Within You, wherever books are sold. If you like this podcast, please tell a friend, leave a review, and make sure to follow me on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Sending warm hugs.